Hello and welcome back. We are going to take a look at how to loop over the items in a dictionary in this video. And so I'm going to go back to the use of the self-contained country dictionary that we've been working with all this while. And then I'll show you how to use the familiar for in loop to go over all the items in the dictionary. We saw the for in loop in the tuples section. We saw it in the list section and we are seeing it here again. So that goes to confirm the fact that I said the construct, the for in construct is applicable to all subscriptable or iterables, which also refers to all the collection data types that we have learned about so far and will learn about in the future because there are newer ones that we need to learn about. Okay, so if I want to loop over this, there are several ways I can do that depending on what is my target, okay? It was different for the tuples and list because they didn't have key value mappings. They just had values and Python assigned numeric indices to each one of them. But for a dictionary, we choose the keys that we use for indexing. And so when we are looping over, it's either we are looping over just the keys or we are looping over just the values or we are looping over the items which i have repeated several times that when i say item in a dictionary i'm referring to the individual key mapping um key value mappings within the dictionary okay so let's see if i say for k in country then i print k i'm using k here because if you do for something in country i mean i am stressing once again here that this is just a variable that you use to represent the current value or the item that the loop is seen remember that the loop is an iteration is going to start from the first item to the last item so at any point in time the particular item that the loop is dealing with is what will be referred to as the variable you put there so I know that because this is a dictionary, if I use the for in loop this way, it is going to loop over the key. That is why I'm saying for K to stand for key. So I can even be verbose and say for key in country print key. Let's see what we get over here. And it's important for you to understand this because after this video, we are going to do an exercise that will require the use of what we're learning. So Python 3 and the file is dictlooping.py and you can see that indeed it loops over the key. So there is name, there is capital, there is currency, there is population, there is president. This is the same as if I did for key in country.keys. I mean, it's pretty much the same, no difference. So let's run this and you can see that we get the same. And you can see also here that the ordering of your items are preserved. This is happening because we are using Python 3.7 or above. If you go below that, the order of the keys in your dictionary is not assured, okay? It's not guaranteed. That's a better word. All right, so this is how we loop with keys. We loop over the keys. So I'm going to add a comment here. I said looping over keys, okay? And then I'm going to comment this guy out and I'll show you how to loop over the values so looping over the values if we wanted to loop over the values i can say for val in country dot values then i can print the val so this is going to give me the values of each of the keys in succession so i'll run this program once again and you can see that this time around, instead of seeing the keys, name, capital, currency, population, president, we are seeing the values Ghana, Accra, Ghana cities, 28 million, Anado, Damkwa, Akufu, Ado. Because when you loop over the values, it is going to return the values in succession. When you loop over the keys, it is going to return it, the keys in succession. How about we want to loop over the items? You remember from the previous videos where we learned about how to get the keys, how to get the values and items of a dictionary that when you call the items function or the method items on a dictionary, it returns to you a list of tuples. Okay. So in our for loop construct, we can also use 
tuple destructuring to get the individual component of the tuple and print them out and that is what we're going to do here so i'm going to comment this guy out and then i will say looping over items and for that i'm going to say for look at what i'm doing here for key value in country dot items now i can print i'm going to use print f to print a mapping between each key and its corresponding value okay so i'll say print and then i will put in the key here and i will make an arrow to point to the value okay so let's run this program and see the output that we will get so you can see that in the dictionary name is mapped to ghana capital is mapped to accra currency is mapped to ghana population is mapped to 28 million and president is mapped to nanada dankwa akofo ado so this is how you loop over the items and remember that when you call the items method you are getting a list of tuples this is why i keep repeating that it is very important for you to understand everything i've taught before so that you will appreciate what we are teaching in here there is a reason why the course is taught in the order in which it is taught some knowledge is dependent on some prior knowledge so you don't skip to help you understand it so the items returns a list of tuples and we have also learned about tuple destruction where we declare variables on the left to hold individual items within the tuple that is the same thing that is going on here so you say for key value in country dot item so the key is going to refer to the first item in the tuple the value is going to return uh, refer to the second item in that tuple which is going to be the value and then we are printing them out so take all the time you need to understand this because in the next video after our short break we are going to do an exercise that includes the use of the four loops that we have learned the dictionaries the tuples the list and probably even the if statement so let's take a quick break and i'll see you in that exercise